Hello, everybody. Welcome to the first episode, the, f the very first episode of 2022 of The End of the Night. David Lee Madison here with my trusty cohort, Joe Ridgely. Joe, how are you? I am excellent. It's great to be back. How are you? I am wonderful. How? Well, well first, uh, uh, I want to Film Hub is a wonderful, wonderful company who sponsored us. Uh, uh, if you're an independent filmmaker and you want to get your product out on numerous platforms, seek out Film Hub. They're awesome to work with, and they are a great sponsor uh, for the last year. So I want to thank Film Hub for that. And uh, and Joe, how uh, was your? Well, go ahead. What were you gonna say? Uh, I actually have something to plug. Sure. I, I do. It, it is Scott Meany's. Uh, upcoming special, Saturday, uh, the Happy Horror Holiday Spectacular Spectacula. So, I like it. It's like Dracula at the end. Right? So be <laughs> sure to join us Saturday night. It's going to start at 930. David Lee Madison and Scott Schiappo are going to be doing the pre-show. And then it's going to be the entire special. And then a Q&A with the cast and crew. Awesome. So how was your holiday season, Mr. Richard? It was spectacular I, being in the new house and, and just my family decorating and then having the whole family here together. It was just wonderful. How was yours? I had a wonderful one. Uh, my I spent it mostly with my beautiful wife and daughter who's still home. She doesn't go back for college for another two weeks. So I'm a happy nice. dad. We still have a uh, she finished the first semester with a perfect 4.0, which is Shocking. Well, absolutely not shocking, actually. And uh, uh, I got some wonderful Christmas gifts, so that was fun. Uh, I found on the internet uh, a gentleman uh, whose name is Stuart. He's just a lovely gentleman. Uh, he was selling some uh, sports memorabilia. I saw this online. Uh, this is so cool. Yeah, I, and I went to his house. Uh, it was all like two and a half hours away. It's between Allentown and Philadelphia, where this gentleman lives. And uh, I drove uh, almost two and a half hours down to this lovely gentleman's house to buy antique baseball cards because uh, I have a passion for antique baseball cards and uh, comic books and toys and all that kind of collectible jazz. And when I got to his house, this man literally, Joe, he had like a museum of the coolest stuff you would ever, ever see. Uh, he had on a, he had a, a shirt on the wall that was uh, uh, signed by Elvis Presley that Elvis wore in the 1950s in, in uh, one of the movies that took place in Hawaii. He had guitars signed by Eric Clapton on the wall and George Harrison and Les Paul. Uh, apparently he worked for CBS, is, uh, uh, for the president of CBS, and accumulated all this wonderful, wonderful stuff over the course of a lifetime. So I go to his house, and uh, as I'm He's showing me all these wonderful collectibles, and I'm uh, I'm sad because I only brought enough money for the baseball cards that I was going to buy. And he was showing me all these wonderful, wonderful uh, uh, autographs and stuff. And I said, you know, Stu, this is a shot in the dark, but I am the biggest Bing Crosby fan on the face of the earth. I mean, I, Bing I, Bing's the man as far as I'm concerned. And he went like he got all excited, and he rushed down to his basement he brought up a book and he opens it up and inside his autographs from like jimmy stewart bella lugosi bar like the best autograph collection you ever saw and he said i have a boris karloff i mean i have a bing crosby autograph he had two of them actually and uh needless to say uh i left with the bing crosby autograph i sold my kidney and my liver but <laughs> i uh i i now to my collection. I never had anything signed by Bing and I was able to get a Bing Crosby autograph, which is now one of my most prized possessions. So I, I'm actually going to go back to his house uh, next week uh, because he has a Dean Martin, Frank Sinatra and a Nat King Cole autograph that I want to buy. And he has some more comic books. So after I sell my wife and child this week, I'm going to go and get some more of those cool collectibles because I'm a sad sap. I got a couple of comments for you. Go ahead. Start off the week off right with a happy end of the night. Ah, Libby's a poet, and she didn't know it. 
Happy yeah. New Year, Libby. I hope you're well. Yeah. Good evening, yeah. Ken. I hope you're well and uh, uh, and happy and healthy and all that jazz. You know, uh, I, I actually want to bring our, our lovely co-host up early because so much has happened since our last show. So much good, bad, and ugly uh, that uh, I want to bring Grunkle Scott on for a moment, uh, you know, up a little bit early so that we can discuss some of these things that, that happen. Ladies and gentlemen, without further ado, our lovely co-host, uh, an icon, star of Clerks and the upcoming Clerks 3 and Vulgar, and dabbled in some shitty movies with me like Wits End and the upcoming Full Moon Fever, Mr. Scott Schiaffo. Hello, hey, lovely. Oh. Hello, lovely and talented Scott Schiaffo. Oh, uh, thank you so much. And your movies are, are not subpar, sir. No, Very no, proud no. of your movies. No, thank you, thank you. You know, I, uh, this is kind of a, a shitty thing to start the new year off with, but uh, somebody who kind of ran in the cir same circles as Scott and I, uh, and even Joe Ridgely is also w was a, a friend of this gentleman. He passed away right, was it right around New Year's Eve, I think? Yeah. Right around New Year's Eve, uh, Rob Robert Bruce, who was uh, from the, co the comic book men show, and he was out on the road with a uh, Brian and Grunkle Scott and I uh, at this particular occasion in uh, Altoona, Pennsylvania. We were doing a panel, and uh, Rob Bruce uh, was uh, a beloved uh, uh, toy uh, aficionado, and uh, uh, just he had an unbelievable passion for collectibles and toys and and, and things. And sadly, uh, he passed away uh, unexpectedly. And uh, I want to say to his friends and his family, you have my deepest and fondest condolences. Uh, Rob and I did uh, at least three or four shows together. And he did uh, my uh, Weekend of Fear back in 2017 in... Uh, oh, you took that photo. Cool, Matt. Uh, back in 2017 in Scranton, Wilkes-Barre. So my deepest condolences to Rob Bruce. He was uh, beloved by many. He was a good guy, and uh, he was really super knowledgeable in everything he did. Scott, oh, do you there's... have any thoughts? Uh, that's a very nice picture, too. Oh, that, yeah, that was a great weekend. Um, it's shocking and just super sad and tragic. I still didn't wrap my head around it completely. There's... This season, there was a lot of dark stuff going on. And when I found out at first, I, the way I found out initially, I th not that it was, I thought it was a prank, but I thought somebody had the wrong information. Like it was a goofy headline that went awry or something. Mm -hmm. And sadly, it was true. And I haven't had the opportunity to speak to anybody from within the View Askew camp about this personally, but, um, you know, Robert was a character. He was always good to me. Um, he was no stranger to drama. But, you know, uh, that said, he was always good to me in person. I never had issues with with Robert myself. I did a couple of his shows. He started his horror convention in Jersey a couple of years ago. And it's just terrible, man. You know, like... <laughs> He was a very interesting cat. He wasn't just a guy who was a curator and collector of old cool things. He actually roadied for the Ramones. Oh, sweet. I didn't know that. <laughs> yeah, he and I had some talks about punk rock back in the day. Like he was in on the ground floor and, you know, he's running around CBGBs back when CBGBs was CBGBs. And, uh, and he had been sober a long time and very supportive of people who had that battle. Uh, and he was very supportive of me and my sobriety. Uh, he had decades uh, up at this point. I, you know, I don't know exactly how long, but just terrible, terrible thing to hear over the holidays. You know, it was just uh, just horrible. And you know what's funny? It seems to it. Uh, there's always seems to be uh, a, a little glut of celebrities that pass away 
around the holidays. But this year, it seems to be a, a bit excessive. I mean, Bob Saget died tonight. Wait a second. Wait a second. My turn. No, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> uh, interesting fact. A uh, Rob Bruce, he, he agreed to be my very first interview after the original technical defects split up. And this was my very first solo interview without a co-host, without a producer, without anything. So needless to say, I had a case of the nerves. This was a few years ago, but but I do have very fond memories of the man. Wow. Yeah, no. I mean, uh, I have both fond and funny memories of, of uh, Mr. Bruce, and I, and I wish nothing but the best to his, his children and his wife, and I hope that... Uh, that he may rest in peace. And, and tonight, I, you know, it's funny. I think, uh, Brian, who, uh, O'Halloran, a dear friend of mine, uh, of, of the show, uh, I think he was actually kind of uh, friendly with Bob Saget. Wasn't he Scott? Or they had some kind of connection. I wouldn't doubt he's got a connection with him. I don't recall it offhand. Right. Um, yeah, it might, it might've been through stand up um, or through, but- or through conventions, yeah, because I knew that Brian had told me a lot of cool stories about Bob Saget. And, uh, yeah, he was another character. He's a really funny guy. I mean, he was like nothing like that dad persona. No, absolutely not. Yeah. Uh, but uh, it, it's one of those almost like, uh, like a Robert Williams kind of losses, one that you just didn't see coming, somebody that was way too young and uh, way too talented and beloved to be taken away from us uh, so soon. Uh, we're, we're supposed to have Joyce Bullifant on tonight, who was absolutely had an iconic career. She's uh, uh, one of the last remaining living uh, characters who are still alive from the Mary Tyler Moore show, and she was from Airplane and Gunsmoke. She had a, an unbelievable career, but uh, I don't think she's connected with us yet, has she, Joe? Technical difficulties, maybe. Yeah, so uh, I, I apologize. Uh, Joyce confirmed with me, and uh, I hope that uh, everything's okay with Joyce and that maybe she's going to pop in during the course of the show. I do uh, have a comment from Libby pertaining to Rob. You got him to buy one of my homemade Dead Women's Hollow DVDs out of my backpack. I got 10 bucks for it and some fun memories. He was a super support. He was super supportive of Indy. Phil. Yes. Was that you, Scott, or was it I who got him to buy it? I think it, well, you know, I hate to admit when I did something and now I'm brain dead and forgot, but I, I think it must have been you if I don't yeah, have Yeah, because a I'm the one who's always doing kind things. It was probably me. Yeah, I'm uh, usually just trying to sell my own stuff, so. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Another unbelievably sad passing. Uh is the iconic actor and who has done more for African-American actors than maybe anybody was a uh, Sidney Poitier. We just lost him like within the last 48 hours. So that was heartbreaking because uh, uh, his influence in film and on culture and pop culture is something that uh, would be almost uh, criminal not to bring up how important a figure he was in Hollywood and in culture. You have any thoughts on him, Scott? Well, other than what you stated, I mean, the guy was, uh, you know, one of the last living legends and also a big part of helping with uh, diversity in Hollywood. I mean, you're going back to a time when he couldn't use the same bathroom. No, absolutely. I mean, literally. Excuse you know, me for I mean, one moment, lived- gentlemen. Uh, your guest is here. She's doing some camera adjustments. I just oh, want to, let you know. Awesome. That's wonderful. Uh, and let's not forget Peter Bogdanovich. Peter Another, Bogdanovich. Oh, my God. I love that guy. A wonderful, a wonderful filmmaker, uh, a great director. And, of course, uh, let's, we, uh, John Madden, who has touched uh, culture in, in sports and football, in entertainment, in television. Uh, he was uh, uh, just a, you know, John Madden was a legendary figure. And of course, uh, right uh, on, I think, uh, New Year's Eve itself, we lost the legendary, or the day before, right around New Year's Eve, we lost the legendary Betty White, who, of course, worked with our uh, lovely guest, who we're going to speak with shortly. 
Well, what I'm going to say, Joyce, whenever you're ready, give me a thumbs up and I'll bring you up. Oh, I think she's giving me a thumbs up. Are you ready? Yes. Without further ado, uh, our featured guest tonight has a resume of uh, acting in both films and television that would be hard to match. Uh, Mary Tyler Moore, Airplane, uh, Weird Science, just a, a, an unbelievable resume. Uh, is uh, extremely talented, extremely funny. I am uh, honored to have on our show tonight, Joyce Bolifont. How are you, Joyce? I'm fine, thank you. I found you. Oh, thank you so much. <laughs> am I pronouncing your last name correctly? How are you saying it? Bolifont. That is so good. Yay, I finally did something right. <laughs> you did something right. That's all. I'm very That's proud. That's what I say. <laughs> First of all, I am honored to have you on our show tonight. I am an enormous fan of your work. I want to introduce. I want to introduce. Thank you. I want to introduce you to uh, actor, uh, film uh, composer, just a wonderful guy, Scott Schiaffo from the Kevin Smith Universe, who's our co-host. And Welcome, Joe Ridgely, And Joe Hello. Ridgely, who is our a uh, wonderful co-host, producer extraordinaire, and just a great guy. Uh, I, wish I, you on. I wish I could see you bigger. I've got you on my phone. Oh, okay. <laughs> you guys poor little, <laughs> little tiny people. Little tiny people. Well, I could tell you, you're not missing anything as far as looks. We're a bunch of goofy-looking middle-aged characters. <laughs> so, so. I doubt that. <laughs> <laughs> Joyce, we were actually just talking about, because sadly, as you probably know, Bob Saget passed away tonight. And we were yes, talking about... And we were talking about wonderful, wonderful folks, uh, entertainers, uh, iconic entertainers who, who we lost uh, of late. And uh, uh, I don't mean to start your interview off on a, on, a, on a bummer note, but you, of course, got to work with uh, the extraordinarily talented, the uh, extraordinarily sweet Betty White. And I also, before I want to ask you about this, uh, I want to tell you that I personally... When I was a kid growing up in New York City, uh, every night throughout the 80s, on WNBC Channel 4 in New York, they would play the Mary Tyler Moore show from mm -hmm. 1 o'clock in the morning till 4 o'clock in the morning. And oh, that's probably, yeah, and that's probably why I got all C's when I went to LaSalle Academy, because I was <laughs> up watching that show religiously. You, you were outstanding. The show was outstanding. Uh, but, uh, well, is there any thoughts that you would like to share with our audience about the late, great Betty White and what it was like to work with her? Well, I adored her personally, and I didn't get to work with her that often on the show. But when I did, she always made me laugh. And she was just a joy to be around. She really was. And I loved her because she gave me permission to tell naughty jokes because she said, <laughs> She said, whenever I told a naughty joke, it sounded like a nursery rhyme. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm afraid it did, so I get away with telling them all the time. <laughs> you know, it's amazing. Your career is literally, I mean, the people you got to work with, the Crazy. films, uh, is unbelievable. Tell us a little bit about how you got started and who were some of the people who inspired you along the way? Oh my goodness, I started, um, when I was 14, I did summer stock. And I did everything from cleaning the toilets to sweeping the stage to burning holes in people's, the stars' pajamas that were in the show. Um, I did every aspect of what you can do in the theater, which helped me a lot. And then I got to play maids. And uh, then I went... I graduated from high school. I was lucky to have gone to a really wonderful school. And instead of going to college, I knew what I wanted to do. So I went straight to New York City and uh, got involved with the American Academy of Dramatic Arts, left there, did my first Broadway play, and then another Broadway play, and then some television in New York, and then... Um, moved to Los Angeles, and three days after I was there, I was put under contract at Universal. 
with an wow. incredible contract of I had to star in eight shows a year and I had to do a pilot and I could work any place else. And I was the last person who ever had a contract like that. But wow. I was very blessed to always be working. Wow. And, that is and, an awesome story. Sorry, Scott. Do you, do you have any questions for Joyce that you want to ask? No, I'm just saying that's just an awesome, awesome, awesome uh, story to hear how uh, how you came up. That's phenomenal. Uh, I'm very, very lucky. And, and, and you got to star in uh, one of the original Bill Cosby shows. What was it like working with uh, Cosby back in the late 60s and early 70s? Uh -huh. Well, I like to say he was a perfect gentleman to me. Mm -hmm. And uh, one day he invited me to lunch uh, in his dressing room. He had his, his cook would come and make lunch for him during lunchtime. And he invited me to lunch. And guess who was there? Sammy Ooh. Davis Jr. and Quincy oh, wow. Jones. Wow. And, and, and Bill Cosby and me. They called me the token white. <laughs> It's funny. In 1973, you did a TV show uh, called "Love Thy Neighbor," and you I got love to... that show. I love. I that. never. I sadly never got to see it. It's it's very hard to find. But you worked with a dear friend of mine, and I'm curious to see uh, what it was like to work with. Uh, I'm dear friends with Harrison Page, who uh, yes. later went on to do Sledgehammer, and the Jean Claude Van Damme movies. What was it like working with a young Harrison Page? Give me something juicy so next time I speak to him, I can pick on him a little bit. Well, you know what? It, it was, I love the show because it was a black couple and a white couple living next door to each other. And they were good friends. And the black couple happened to be the boss of the white couple who was uh, Ron Mesa, played my husband. And uh, Janet McLaughlin played Harrison's wife. But you know that it's funny. I don't have a funny story to tell about Harrison. Mm -hmm. I have a sad story that Aww. I've never forgotten. And that's that when he went home down south, I can't remember. What, do you know where he was from? Uh, I think he was from Georgia. Yeah. Well, when he went home, he said if he was walking on the sidewalk and a white person walked on the sidewalk towards him, he had to step off the sidewalk. And I never forgot that story. It always stayed with me, how, how very sad. Harrison has a great way, uh, is a, has a great way of, uh, uh, he lights up a room. He's a, he's a great personality, he's a funny guy, and, uh, but he also lived an extraordinarily uh, interesting life, much like you yourself have. Uh, now, I am, as I said earlier, I am the biggest Mary Tyler Moore fan, so allow me to geek out for a minute. Yes. Tell me what it was like, if you possibly can. Uh, uh, I know that I've watched every episode multiple times, so I know you got to work with Ted Knight. Oh, I, God, I love that man. He's I, wonderful. <laughs> you know, he became the character. I was doing the Bill Cosby show, and I was doing Love Thy Neighbor, so I had to be a reoccurring character. I couldn't be there for every mm -hmm. show. But when I would come back, the characters became more the characters they were playing. And Ted Knight, Ted Knight was so funny. He'd say, hi, Joyce. How have you been? You want to come up and see my new deck, my, the way they decorated my new dressing room? <laughs> he, was, <laughs> he really became that character. And then at one point in my life, I lived across the street from him. And we played tennis together. But when he ever served the ball, it was the funniest serve I've ever seen. And I couldn't return it because I'd be bent over laughing. <laughs> <laughs> It's funny because I'm, when I I'm was drink to that. <laughs> absolutely, because when I was a kid uh, growing up in the seventies and eighties, sadly my dad uh, skipped out when I was a very very little boy, and I think I grew up kind of like imagining having TV fathers. And for some reason, I always thought like Ted Knight would have been like the coolest dad because he... <laughs> <laughs> I love I love the one where where they're all upset there at our house. Uh, Gavin in my house 
and they've all come. Uh, Gavin's been fired or something. I've forgotten. Betty comes with food, and they all say they're going to leave the show. Right. Do you remember this episode? And and Ted gets down on his knees, crying. Please, please don't make me leave. Really, please. Please, yes. <laughs> <laughs> It's also one of my favorite episodes is the one where they all where I think Ted uh, bets Lou that he was going to get the Chinese prime minister's name correctly at the 11 o'clock. <laughs> and the whole episode, he's saying it correctly. But at, when he's actually doing it on the news, he calls him Hideki Sawakaki. <laughs> and he goes right on, on the live news. Damn. <laughs> I always thought that was, the show was so unbelievably clever. Well, you know what it was? Mm -hmm. It was a great cast, but the writing made it. As Shakespeare says, the play's the thing. And the writing was so delicious. And they, they every week we come in for a table reading and it would be very funny. We'd be laughing. It'd be great. And the next day they come in with even more. They polish and polish and polish. They don't do that anymore, I'm afraid. No. Uh, let me ask you about the series finale when they all got back in the newsroom together. That's a and... sore subject for me. Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, no. Why, you weren't there? Yes, I wasn't there and I was written in and I was supposed to be doing a play in Kansas City, I, a musical I do, I do. And I, um, I got the script and I was written in the final script. And I called the people in Kansas City and I said, oh, I'm so sorry. Do you mind? You have enough time to recast it. I really want to be in the final episode. And they said, we totally understand. It's okay. And then uh, just before we were going to start shooting, I got a call and they said, um, we're running a little long, so we're cutting out uh, your part. Oh. Oh. That really, really, really made me sad. <laughs> sure. <laughs> But oh, that show business, that show business. I was also supposed to be Mrs. Brady on the Brady Bunch, but you know, everything happens for a reason. No. Isn't were you, that you were in the final? Happened? Were you like in the <laughs> final callbacks for that role? For me, oh, I had it. I wasn't in the callbacks. I had it. I was wardrobed, ready to go, and uh, Florence Henderson became available. And Artie's, uh, Marty Starger, the president of ABC in New York, for some reason, ABC in New York had final say over the West Coast. And wow. um, they called and said, we want Florence. And I was sitting there with um, a show of, oh, shoot, can not believe his name? I'll think of it in a minute. Um, Robert Reed? No, no. Um, oh. No, the writer. Um, Sherwood uh, Schultz? Sherwood Schwartz. Sherwood. And I was sitting there in the director, and I was coming out showing them the clothes. This is what she wears in the, uh, for the wedding in the garden. This is the going away suit. That, and every time I came out, they had this funny look. So I came out the third time. I sat down next to them. I said, is something wrong? And they said, Joyce, sit down. We're having a problem. Uh, ABC in New York, Florence Henderson's become available and they want her and we're fighting for you because we wrote it like the Lucy show and if Florence does it, it'll be the Donna Reed show and we'll have to recast the housekeeper because the housekeeper was a straight person. Now we're going to have to make her the funny person. Anyway, we'll let you know and we're fighting for you. Oh, and um, yeah, later that night, Sherwood came by the house. He didn't call. He came by my house and told me what they had decided. And he was feeling pretty down in the dumps because they had a, a lot of rewrites to do. And um, I mean, I had a signed contract. Um, so it was the little girls were all cast to look like me. And it it was one of those moments that you go, well, that that is what is that uh, that's the way the cookie crumbles and i felt so bad for sherwood i was trying to make him feel better but as it turned out it was the right move it was an excellent show 
and Florence was wonderful and she's a sweet and dear, was a sweet and dear lady. I'm so tired of saying was about these wonderful friends and uh, that, that I've lost recently. But um, it everything turns out the way it's supposed to. Mm. Well, that's a really stellar attitude. And, and for somebody who you have been and I, you know, iconic for decades, your staying power is, is attributed, obviously, to your uh, professional good nature. Well, that's that's very kind. And it sounds pretty Pollyanna. And I don't mean it that way. But I think anyone who's going to be an actor, they have to um, have a great sense of humor about the business and about themselves. Or I don't know how you survive. <laughs> sure. If you take yourself too seriously, you're doomed. Absolutely. Yeah, that that goes for anybody. In any profession. Yes, uh, exactly. Another unbelievable project that you were involved with is probably one of the most iconic comedies of all film comedies of all time is airplane tell us how how did you get oh that 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 scene when when that lady's playing the guitar and you're standing next to her and you're knocking out julie whelan's uh iv wire and she's convulsing it's one of the most iconically funny scenes in the history of film how did you get involved in the classic well, i'll tell you one thing i read the script and i said this is the dumbest script I've ever read. <laughs> I'm not going to do this stupid movie. It's really stupid. I said, people are coming down the baggage claim. It doesn't make any sense. And um, I was married to William Asher at that time. And he said, you are an actress. You act. And I said, oh, God, okay. And then on that mock-up airplane, we're walking up and down the aisles looking at each other saying, do you think this is funny? <laughs> you know, I, I can forget, really. Uh, I'll never forget the the first screening of it at Paramount. I sat there thinking, "This is going to be so embarrassing. I'm going to just hide under my seat." And after two seconds, people were falling out of their chairs into the aisles, laughing. I was wrong. <laughs> well, I tell you, I can really appreciate what you're saying because we're talking about a film that sort of set a template, but before that film, there was really nothing like that. And it really is so stupid that it's hilarious because it's all in the delivery. You know, it's all in the delivery. And uh, that's just a really wonderful story to hear from somebody who was there at the time it was brand new. That's right. That's amazing. So were you actually, after after you guys sat through the first screening, were you surprised at the reception the film was getting? I was totally surprised. I couldn't believe it. I couldn't believe it. But I was laughing so hard, too. I mean, I, I was hysterical. And Mrs. Koch, Howard Koch's wife, Ruth, she looked at me before it started and said, well, this is going to be embarrassing, isn't it? I said, it certainly is. And the two of us... Just were laughing so hard, tears were coming down our face. <laughs> uh, don't call me Shirley. Yeah, it's right. one of those films that where all the stars aligned for some bizarre reason. Everything works in it, and it was yeah. just a, a wonderfully wonderful sh film. Now, well, uh, we're again, lucky to be part of something like that. That's well, right. You're that a part of you're, you're a part of Airplane, which is a groundbreaking historic uh, comedy film, and you're a part of the most historic one, if not the most historic television show of all time. So I think you you've done pretty good with yourself. I would. I'd I would say. say. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much. Uh, I'm a now, good second banana. <laughs> <laughs> now I actually remember this show very well because I was a big fan of uh, as a kid of Alice, as anybody who's in their mid fifty was mid uh, yes. fifties now. Uh, he, uh, Alice had a sh uh, there was a show called Alice, and Vic Tabak was on it. And Linda Lavin, as I recall, played Alice, and uh, it was just uh, and 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 they did a uh, uh, there was an extraordinarily funny character on that show named Flo, and they did a, a spinoff show of that called Flo, as I recall, and you uh, were co-starred on Flo. Tell us uh, a little bit about how that came together and any thoughts you had on working on that series. Oh boy, this is a hard one. <laughs> 
Um, it was uh, uh, Polly Halliday wanted me, who played Flo, mm -hmm. uh, wanted me to play her best friend, and I came in and read for it, and I got it. And Polly had creative control of the whole show, and we were doing very well. And then they, after Thanksgiving, each each character kind of had an episode where they were the star, and the one that I was in. Um, it rated pretty high, and I think it made Polly unhappy, and she asked the writers not to write for me anymore. And wow. um, it, it, was, it was a difficult set. It was a very difficult set. And, um, and the actors in it were all theater people. We all knew our lines solid, and we all had, everybody in it had great timing. Um, it, but it was not a happy set. Oh, that's not. Well, sorry to hear that story, but that's I again. Don't know why I took that? Don't tell yeah, anybody. I told you. <laughs> <laughs> don't worry. Nothing <laughs> shocking, right? No. Sad, sadly, I, jo Joyce, I, only I, Scott I, and I watch this show. Pardon? I said, sadly, only Scott and I watch this show, so you have nothing to worry about. <laughs> oh, good. <laughs> Glad to hear it. <laughs> Nothing like honesty. No. Uh, uh, weird Science. Now, that was, uh, a, that a, was a fun, fun 90s show. Uh, I played uh, my son's mother. Oh, wow. That works yep. out wonderful. Yeah, that was really fun. Was your son, I don't recall the lead's name. My, my son, John Asher. Oh, okay. Yes. I remember. He was... Yeah. I remember the show now. I'm sorry, because yeah. there was a film, Weird Science, that it was... Uh, uh, that had Anthony it's Michael based, Hall... Based yeah, on based on the show. Yeah. Yep, yep. And, yeah. uh, and I think it was... Uh, it was a... W, was it a WB show? Or a UPN show, Weird Science? You know what? I have no idea. <laughs> I remember it being on either Channel 9 or 11 in New York. Uh, I thought it was a USA Network show. A USA. That was in syndication. Oh, well, look at that. And if you hold on, I can call John and ask him. <laughs> <laughs> no, that, that, was, that was a wonderfully funny show, much like the film. Uh, and you were fantastic in it. Well, thank you. It was hard to call uh, John Gary because he was my son, John. <laughs> <laughs> and it was hard. it wasn't hard for him to call me mom. So, do we lose Joyce? We might have. She may have hit the camera. Oh, sorry. Oh, there oh. she is. Well, there oh. she was. Okay, there you go. I'm back. <laughs> I'm back with a vengeance. There you go. <laughs> it's it's the sequel. Yeah. <laughs> Guys, so Joyce, you've, gone, you've gone all through my career here. Well, it's just so much, so much amazing stuff. This show literally is really just a, a love letter to the people that we grew up adoring. Uh, we've had some, uh, we're blessed to have uh, some wonderful pe folks on here. And we, uh, I, I really wanted you on because I especially uh, appreciated your career and how talented you are and how funny you are and how sweet you always seem to be to fans and stuff. So Thanks. it was uh, uh, just, uh, we're, we're actually honored to have you on. Well, uh, I'm so, very honored to be asked. Well, thank you very much. Uh, what are we up to these days, Joyce? Oh, my goodness. I, it seems the last part of my life. I wrote a book. Did you know that? I did not. I saw that book. Oh. I, saw, I saw it on your Facebook page, the book. Yeah, my a very embarrassing title called My Four Hollywood Husbands. <laughs> right. That's awesome. That's a great title. Well, they were all Hollywood husbands. In the background of the book is the golden age of Hollywood. And through it, woven through it, is my love story to Roger Perry, whom I finally, we married in 2002, having fallen in love in, what, 19, I mean, uh, 1962. Wow. <laughs> but I mean, we were married to other people. With, so it was totally unspoken love. 
Now, I got to think that that's got to be right. Have you been approached for that to become a either made for TV film or a film? You know what? It should be. It's a great idea for a series. It would be wonderful because it, it could also it unfolds Hollywood over those years, which is very yeah. cool. With a love story woven through it. And right. Actually, it's a lot about alcoholism and codependency and the effects that it has on a family and how to overcome it and that your life can go on and you can end up having a happy life. That's awesome. And I can identify with that. It just, it just came out in audio. I am going, the minute I'm done with this broadcast, I'm going to get myself a copy because I just got done with, I don't know if you know Melanie Chardoff, but I read her book. Yeah. And it was fantastic. Yeah. And I am going to pick yours up right away because I am a big fan and I can't wait to to hear all that was going on in those days. <laughs> oh, you'll, you'll get an earful <laughs> or an eyeful, whether you read it or hear it. Now, I live, up, I live up here in northeast Pennsylvania in a small town called Milford. I know that at some point in your life, you spent some time in New Hope, Pennsylvania. I love, I love New Hope. It's always been a dream to end my life there, but mm -hmm. I don't think that's going to happen. But I love going. I went to boarding school there, uh, Solberry School. And sure. as you'll read about that in the book. And it was a very, very happy time for me. Yes, I, I mean, I grew up in Middle Village, Queens, which is right out of sight of New York City. And uh -huh. I've spent, I've spent the le almost the last 30 years in, in northeast Pennsylvania in a small town called Milford. And I've been blessed to see a good part of almost virtually every state in the Union. But for some reason, every time I'm outside of Pennsylvania, I can't wait to go back. It's one of those I love, places. I love Pennsylvania. If you're ever in the Northeast and you want to see a beautiful little town in Milford, Pennsylvania, it's uh, the American birthplace of cinema because it's right outside Edison. Uh, DW, yeah, D.W. Griffith and Cecil B. DeMille made their very first films up here in Milford, Pennsylvania. Oh, my I, goodness. Well, my dear friend was Lillian Gish. And oh. She had, I call her my fairy godmother. Wow. We were very close. Lillian, that is astonishing because Lillian Gish is probably the first American movie star. And she was making those films up here in Milford, Pennsylvania. We actually have a f little small film library in which uh, uh, Mary Pickford and Lillian Gish uh, uh, both worked up here. And uh, if you're ever in the Northeast, I will gladly take you out to dinner in Milford, Pennsylvania and show you all these wonderful Well, wonderful I'll do ones. anything for a free dinner. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> I was no. going to ask you, Joyce, you, when you made the Sojourn out west pretty early and you stayed out west, I guess, that whole time. I mean, you, you've you been a, a, a California person because that's where the work was? Yes. I, I did go back to New York in 1967, I think it was, to do a Broadway play with Bill Bixby. But first of all, with uh, Sam Waterston. He was cast as a leading man. And wow. then that didn't work out, and they recast Bill Bixby and because they thought he was funnier. And I thought Sam was fabulous. But um, that's what happens. Again, that show, Biz. <laughs> that's right. Now, I, I wanted to ask you this because I'm, I, I'm not sure, and I'm having a, 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 okay, I remembered his name. Did you ever get to work with Chuck Connors? I did not, no. Okay, because I know you did a lot of early westerns. A lot of westerns. I love yeah. westerns. And I, I love always, cowboys. <laughs> I always wanted to 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 meet somebody who could give me any inside dope on Chuck Connors because there's so many weird stories about that cat that I. But I was a big uh, fan of his. Really? Yeah. Was he? No, he wasn't. He wasn't he was, on a. He wasn't on arrest and trial, was he? Was he the rifleman? He was the rifleman, and he was branded. No, Arrest in Trial. I know you're talking about the Ben Gazzara uh, TV series, right. correct? Yes, and my right. husband, Roger Perry, was in that. Oh, wow. You're not going to believe this. I don't know if it's going to show up on camera. I have that. Just give me a second. <laughs> yeah, what? I can't see because you're a little tiny person. He's going to come back in a second. He went to go get something. Oh, okay. That's why I can't see it. 
<laughs> He's. I, I think he has either a prop or something, or or something from that show. I don't know if this is going to show up well. Uh -huh. I, I'm putting my glasses on. Uh, oh, oh yes, it did. I'm looking this for is, my glasses. Right, my, this is the board game. I can't believe we're talking about it. I mean, I'm going to give so funny. I did one of those, too. I'm a huge... Yeah, there he is. That's oh, yeah. that's him. Yeah. Right. Yeah. That's Chuck Connors or Ben Gazzara? That's Gazzara. Chuck Connors on the right oh. and Ben Gazzara down below. And Roger played one of the detectives. Oh, sweet. Oh, wow. That is fabulous. That is fabulous. I mean, I'm, I'm a huge see. Gazzara fan. I, <laughs> I made your face bigger. I can see you, David Lee Madison. I can see you. <laughs> oh, and thank now, you. I can see you, Scott. Chef, how do you Shaffo. fine. Shaffo. Shaffo. Hello there. Hello. Are you, are you, do you play the piano and all those instruments? I do. Oh, that's great. Scott actually yeah. is a composer. He composed uh, uh, the soundtrack to two of my films. Uh, and uh, uh, Scott actually uh, is in one of the more iconic uh, comedy films of all times. So I don't know if you ever saw Clerks, but Scott is in Clerks. And uh, she's looking at me like I have no idea what Clerks is. Yeah, well, that's a whole other, that's a whole other blow of wax, right? That's yeah. a whole other <laughs> movie film. What? Uh, wow! It had to be the board game. What? That was strange. No, I brought up Clerks, and she's like, "I'm out of here." Right? <laughs> no, that can't be what happened, was it? <laughs> I'm thinking either a phone died or <laughs> or a well, button was pushed. She was, at, you know, I hope she comes back on because I would like to say our proper goodbyes. But if she does not, that was one of the funnest. I'm literally giddy with how fun that interview was. I mean, she had one of the most, a miraculous career. Right. And, it's like the whole six degrees with Kevin Bacon, but with her, it's more throughout the decades. I can't I'm believe sorry. it. Hey, hey. Oh. I, I hit the wrong button. Okay. <laughs> we thought we awesome. upset you with something we said. We were like, we were behaving. <laughs> what happened? <laughs> oh, boy. <laughs> I can't believe I, we were talking about arrest and trial. That blows my mind. Right. That's so great. <laughs> now, are you on the... Joyce, are you on the West Coast or are you on the East Coast these days? I'm not sure. Okay. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I'm somewhere. I think I'm on the West Coast. I'm on, on the West Coast. Coast. Sweet. Near because Palm I'm, Springs. Yes, because I wanted to make sure that, you know, it's almost 11 o'clock here on the East Coast, and I didn't want to be that guy who kept you up too late. Oh, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> of course, I'm starving to death. Don't worry about that. Oh, okay. Well, with, the, with that being said, Joyce, can you tell everybody who's watching tonight where they can find you on social media and they could follow your wonderful career? I can't, I'm not very good at this stuff, but I think if you go on Joyce Boulevard um, on, uh, what, FaceTime? Or Facebook. I um, yeah, I think that's it. Yes. I'm just looking. I just didn't see myself. I didn't realize... I was going to be on camera. I would have put lipstick on and combed my hair. All <laughs> kidding aside, Joyce, you are an extraordinarily beautiful and talented woman, and there's nothing that would make you other than that. And I want to thank oh. you so much. It was a complete honor and privilege to have you on our show tonight. Thank you for, and all kidding aside, thank you for a lifetime of memories. Uh, the Mary Tyler Moore Show has uh, touched millions and millions of people. And you are a wonderful part of that. Airplane is something that makes people laugh when they're at their lowest of lows. Mm -hmm. And uh, and just so many wonderful things that you contributed to the arts and to making people smile and happy. And thank you so much. Happy New Year. I hope 2022. Happy New Year. Happy uh, New Year. Joe it's has one. Kinder, nicer, better new year for everybody I, sh I sure hope so joe what were you going to say you look like well, you had something you want to yes say. please joyce can you tell us where we can find your book and your audio book uh amazon.com great you yeah. are the man you all see joe that's why we pay you the big bucks because you remember <laughs> all the important stuff all the important stuff 
Thank you. Thank you for asking. <laughs> Absolutely. Uh, everybody watching is saying nothing but wonderful things, a wonderful show. You're, you're extremely sweet and funny. And uh, Joyce, please, uh, if you ever have anything that you want to promote or if you just want to come on and make fun of us, we'll be happy to have you on. I'd you're... love to come on and make fun of you. Oh, yes. <laughs> no, she needs to come on and tell dirty jokes. Well, wait a oh, minute. That may be a different channel. Can we different have channel. a whole evening of that? <laughs> I don't tell dirty jokes. I tell naughty jokes. Naughty jokes. I apologize. <laughs> <laughs> I just want to hear him like nursery rhymes. Right. <laughs> uh. I get the big bucks for that. <laughs> Then you're on the wrong show. <laughs> I, I think I know that. I, I have to go now. I'm starving. <laughs> Miss Bullifon, thank you so, so very thank much. Thank you so much, Joyce. Have thank a, you. You all a, were fun, and you certainly were very generous with your kind comments. Thank you. Well, they were all very true. Thank you. You're a legend, and thank you for being on our show tonight. Have thank a great you. night. Good night. Bye-bye. Bye. Wow. <laughs> she's like i don't know she's now my favorite guest of all time i don't there's she like makes me like she has a glow to her and just a, such a wonderful sincerity uh, for somebody who's literally done yeah i mean in all fairness her name is not the most recognizable name in hollywood that's a fair statement i'm sure she would say the same thing but when you look at her resume and when you see her right away you know who she is and that voice yes and she's just charming and beautiful and witty and just really i'm surprised she was never on love that's probably yeah she i don't think she was on the boat uh but uh, uh wow I, scott can you imagine the stories of like she could tell of like the people that she came across over the years just in the time she was on i mean it yeah. was just like bam 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 you know i mean somebody who's you know, character actor and musician and whatnot. I, to, to hear all, to, to, she really is very inspiring. I mean, that's so inspiring. That's the type of person I would have like as a mentor or emulate, you know, just in and you stay in and wow, like just wow. Yeah, no, she was awesome. And uh, sometimes when it, it sucks when you meet somebody that you uh, admire, but in this case, it was one of those cases where, she was everything I hoped she'd be, plus 10 times more. But imagine how much better the Brady Bunch would have been if she was on it. And I say better. <laughs> yes, I did say better. <laughs> yeah, you know, in all honesty, Florence Henderson, other than being pretty, really didn't bring much to the table on that show. I mean, I mean, nobody ever in the history of watching the Brady Bunch said, I watched the Brady Bunch because of Florence Henderson. Let's be honest. <laughs> but... Uh, uh, is she, uh, and, and it's funny because I can see somebody making airplane and because it was the type of humor that was never really, really broached on, uh, before, uh, making that movie thinking that it was going to be a colossal failure because it was, uh, just so over the top, so zany. So I could see why people uh, making that film would not have, uh, you know, a wonderful feeling about it. But uh, I'm glad that she uh, got to see the reaction of how beloved that movie is. I mean, I still think it's probably in the top five most beloved comedies of all time. I think it's a fair. It's assessment. certainly probably one of the top uh, game-changing comedies. Like, as far yeah. as, like, stylistically, you ne we never really saw anything quite like it before it. And after it, there's a million copycats. Well, all right. I mean, Leslie Nielsen doing the Naked Gun movies. It... I mean, it, after Airplane, it, for like 15, almost 20 years, it was just copycat, copycat, copycat. How did the sequel copycat. do? I don't remember. Uh, it did moderately well, uh, but they they made some interesting casting choices. Like William Shatner had a big part in it. And William Shatner, unless you want William Shatner to be William Shatner, he kind of is not uh oh chuck connors was in airplane too he's right thank you ken i haven't seen airplane two in a long time but i know that uh shatner had a big part and uh and robert hayes returned but i think it was because they 
They weren't on an airplane. They were on a space shuttle, as I re- as I recall. Oh, really? I think <laughs> I don't so. think I've ever seen it. Yeah, okay. I think they were. On a, I think they were on a space shuttle. That, or something. That's really the. Good. Is that the Abrams? That's that's the Abrams guys. Or am I getting that wrong now? JJ a- no. Uh, no, not JJ Abrams. I thought there were brothers that were part of the first airplane. You know what? For some reason, after you said that, that kind of makes sense now. Abrams, yeah. Uh, and then they did a they did a slew of comedies that were in that style that weren't necessarily a sequel, yeah. but that had that spoof. And the Leslie Leslie Nielsen had a that that was a rebirth of a career for him, like he became the zany guy because he was always serious as a heart attack. That cat before that, yeah, was he serious, was. Yeah. Mission he not was. Mission Impossible. Was it Mission Impossible or what was he on? No, that was, was Peter Graves. Okay, no, I, always, I always I always mistake Peter Graves and Leslie Nielsen. Yeah, they're similar. But, but what but was he on? Was, he was in a big sci-fi movie in the 1950s with Robbie the Robot. Oh, not Lost in Space. He uh, was the he was the lead guy in 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 uh, one of the bigger sci-fi movies, which was the, a, a that street was the black hole, was it? I'm sure Ken's gonna make me look stupid and whip it out any second. <laughs> I thought Leslie Nielsen did a, a cop comedy. Prior to that, Police Squad. Police Squad. Okay. And Police Squad became the Naked Gun movies. Okay, gotcha. See, I'm getting an education at 45. It's okay. I'm getting an education every day in my 50s. God, I, I look ghostly pale. Oh. Well, gentlemen, another wonderful, wonderful episode of the End of the Night in the Books. Uh, we have all kinds of shit. Forbidden Planet. Thank you, Ken. See, he, know, he knows. He's the, he's the man with the plan. Well, there was a uh, question mark, so hopefully, yeah, probably it. Hmm? No, that sounds right. That sounds right. Uh, oh, listen, again, really thanks. Uh, I, I, again, I want to thank the lovely and talented Joyce Bullifant for joining us tonight. It was an absolute uh, uh, pleasure to have an icon as our first guest of the uh, new year. Uh, Next week, uh, Joe Ridgely has all kinds of crazy shenanigans planned for us. Uh, I think Scott, you're going to see Scott and I both on Saturday and Sunday night next week, correct? Yeah, sounds about right. You guys are going to be hosting Woo-hoo! the Happy Horror Holiday Spectacular. Spectacular. You're doing the pre-show from 9.30 to 10, and then the actual special is airing live on the Indie Escape Facebook channel and YouTube channel. Don't forget to like and subscribe, please. Then after that, it is going to be a Q&A with the cast and crew. Sweet. Oh, Joe, I wanted to, to mention to you, I've been watching all of the Indie Escape shows as they've been coming on, and you're doing unbelievably enormous, wonderful things with these programs. You should be very proud of yourself. Uh, I'm very proud of you. I'm absolutely honored to do this gig with you every week and to call you a friend you're a great guy and uh you're, that. you're building something here uh that's awesome yes and, and sleep is definitely for the week <laughs> <laughs> with that i won't keep you up any longer scott is there anything that you have coming up or anything going on that we need to know about no no okay what? Oh, I got nothing i got nothing no i I mean, the big thing is until next summer, which is Clerks 3, or big, big in my orbit. But, uh, well, what are you talking about? You've got your thing. That's- wait, 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 wait. Come back to me. That, Joe, is what they call a direct kick in the nuts. Because I don't have anything big until the summer. That little <laughs> shitty thing I did with Dave might come out this spring. But the big, <laughs> the, you, big imp- the big, important, wonderful stuff comes out next summer with Clerks 3. Uh, so, yeah. Thanks, pal. You're, you're the best. You know what? If anybody wants to buy me flea and tick powder, that'd be <laughs> wonderful. Because I'm having a real problem with hair on my back. <laughs> what is the update? Uh, the update is is that the film is no longer in my hands. It, uh, it, it was Really? Uh, yeah. It's going to be purchased by a distributor. And then when that happens... Going have, to be or has been? Uh, I'm not, I'm, it has been, I just haven't turned in the finished product yet because I'm, uh, I want to make it a really, really great movie, but yes, it, it, it has been acquired. 
I just haven't turned in. I have till March 1st to give them because uh, uh, they decided to make it a Halloween release. Uh, Mr. Smithson, wearing your shirt tonight, brother. Smithson's creation. Sean, I hope you are feeling well. I know you've been a little bit under the weather lately. I hope you're feeling well, and Happy New Year, brother. Thank you for watching the show. You've been uh, nothing but a, a great friend of the show, and just a great guy all around. And thank you, Libby, and Carrie, and Ken. And you know what? Where the hell's CJ tonight? I'm kind of worried about him. Uh, he was doing a family thing this weekend. He's doing. I spent. He. Thing. I messaged with him earlier. Uh, he was supposed. He said he might be popping on tonight, but I guess he didn't. I also want to wish. Uh, it was either today or yesterday, but it was Matt Staley's birthday, so I want to wish. Yesterday, yeah. Wish Matt a happy. Really? Birthday. Did I miss that? Was it not on Facebook? Was it not a Facebook birthday? I don't know if it's a Facebook. We birthday. said it last night on the happy. Oh, you don't birthday. get Facebook uh, notifications for people you're friends with for their birthday. I was too busy fighting with Plex last night to look at Facebook. Why were you was, fighting with Plex? What did Plex ever do to you? I, I couldn't get it to work. I had to call my trusty tech guy to fix it for me. Wow. <laughs> he fixed. It. Happy birthday, Matt. Uh, uh, and we're giving you credit for the picture as well, which uh, apparently yeah, he took. I didn't even. I didn't. I, I didn't. You know, I found out in my pictures. I didn't even know that Matt took it. But thank you, Matt. I want to say that in that particular picture, uh, though the competition isn't you know all that rough, I'm by far the best looking cat in that group. <laughs> but it's like you know the hideous mook competition. So coming in first in the hideous mook competition is never really a win. <laughs> I love you, Scott. You know I'm just teasing you, pal. <laughs> Scott didn't have any hair then. Yeah, that's well, I. Yeah, that seems like forever ago, doesn't it? Wow. You know what? When you look at that picture, it's like me, Brian, and Scott, like all showered, and Robert didn't apparently because like we're oh. all nice and we're together and pally, and Rob Bruce is like, I don't know these people. <laughs> <laughs> he's, he's quite far away from Brian. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Maybe he didn't want Brian to steal his coffee or something. He How long ago was that picture taken? Do you remember? Do you recall? I think that was Altoona in 2014, I think. Wow! Yeah, certainly. It might maybe at least that. If, yeah, if not maybe, maybe, yeah. It's two thousand fourteen. I mean, comic book men was in full swing. Yeah, yeah. And uh, I think I was promoting uh, uh, Mr. Hush at that show, so it was probably uh, Mr. Hush came out in August of two thousand twelve. So it was either like thirteen or fourteen, I would assume. No, we should do sometime yeah. if we're able to. We should we should get Zap and Ming on at the same time. Okay. Well, they they are they are uh, I sell comics, right? Well, Isn't yeah, that I sell thing together. So like right. maybe but they also out. have the new uh, podcast studio, right? That's officially again after COVID or during COVID, but yeah, they're promoting that big time. But I mean, they're great guys. Uh, Since the holidays, so you well, say. I don't know if you're aware, aware of this, but uh, Zapsic is is now very active with the stash as well well yeah you took over for walt didn't he and there you have it oh sorry <laughs> okay i mean i i don't know what was public knowledge and what wasn't but oh. i was just gonna say that it yeah, doesn't I think that was on it was online it was online yeah uh. something like that. but i just knew that he you know he's uh, much more prominent in the social media as well for like the stash and whatnot right well, Joe, have you ever been to the stash i have not Neither have I. I, mean, I you've I, never I, been get out of here, really? You've never Are you been saying that to me or to Joe? To him. To you. No, to you. I mean, I can't, you're closer I mean, to Red Bank than I am. <laughs> yeah. I'm surprised you've never been. Uh, you've been I, I mean, in all honesty, the only two people in the Kevin Smith universe that I'm fans of are you and Brian. So why would I go to the stash? <laughs> Well, but wait a minute now. You know you're, I mean, you like Ernie, Kevin. you're not watching this, are you? Oh, I love Ernie. Uh, Ernie and <laughs> Kevin. You are okay. a supporter of Kevin, right? I mean, when you met him at the roast, you were pretty pretty pumped, right? Yeah. So I just, I'm surprised you've never been to the store. No, no. I haven't been there. Do they have toys? 
They got all kind of crazy stuff. Yeah, yeah. toys. Well, especially the new one now. So if I went there last Wednesday, I would have came home with a Bing Crosby autograph. <laughs> well, that's definitely. I might, I might maybe, have. I might have. Maybe a blunt man <laughs> autograph. Yeah. <laughs> but <laughs> oh, you guys are killing me. With that being said. Thank you, everybody, for watching another jam-packed, action-packed edition of The End of the Night. Uh, Joyce was absolutely fantastic. It was a thrill and honor to have her on. Joe, do you know what's going on next week, or is it something that you can uh, tell everybody, or is it still kind of in the working out stages? We're in the working out stages. I believe we're going to have a writer-director of a new film with Michael J. White and uh, Mickey Rourke. Sweet. And then we're going to have a few folks from the Horrorville uh, Horror Convention in Coco. Uh, that's going to be the following weekend. So That sounds wonderful. That, and, uh, uh, I have a whole bunch of really big plans for 2022. Uh, I'm working on getting a Dick Cavett, uh, who's a, a legend. Uh, we have a whole bunch of other uh, wonderful people. Uh, and... Uh, just stay tuned to our silly shenanigans and you never know who's going to pop up on this. I mean, tonight we had one of the last surviving members of the Mary Tyler Moore show. I mean, how, how epic is that? All right. With that being said, everybody, thank you for watching tonight. We'll be back next Sunday night at 10 PM on your same bat time, same bat channel. And, uh, is there anything else before I do my line here, Joe, that you need to throw in? Nope. Uh, and remember, no man is a failure who has friends. See you guys next Sunday.